something in the air and a sparkly shimmer on our skin. Andrew here. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel of hiking and photography adventures in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, sorry about the wind to start with. Um, there's a bit of a storm coming in and uh, the wind has already started to pick up. I've come out here on this beautiful Sunday. Uh, it is late May so it's uh, almost winter. Winter's just around the corner but it's still beautiful and warm here in Auckland. Uh, and uh, I'm off on a little bit of a day hike uh, which I haven't done in a very long time I must say. I just thought today um, I might share with you some of my pointers for kind of improving I guess your hiking snaps, um, your um, you know photos you take while you're on a hike um, if you're that way inclined which I assume if you're watching this channel you probably like hiking and probably like taking photos. Um, so this isn't really about photography and uh, you know the artistry of composing beautiful images. This is just a few tips for ways that you can uh, just add a little bit more punch and a little bit of more impact to uh, those photos that you snap when you're out on your favourite walks. We've reached uh, the first kind of little high point on this track and uh, it's quite exposed to the wind. Um, so again, sorry, about, oh, sorry about the sound. Um, I really hope you can hear me. Um, so the, the first tip I have really for improving your photography when you're hiking is uh, pretty simple and that's to have your camera readily accessible. It's really important that your camera is actually accessible to you. If you've got it stashed away inside your bag uh, you're less likely to want to stop and take the time to get it out to take a photograph and uh, if it's a fleeting moment you may miss it. I like to use these Peak Design capture clips. They just go on the strap of your bag and uh, you can attach your camera that way. Um, they're fantastic and uh, yeah it was a real game changer for me having a clip like that. Peak Design has got the most popular and probably the best built one but there are a couple of other ones uh, that you can get as well, different brands. But the, that's definitely my number one tip is have your camera accessible. It's definitely getting windier. Um, so you know if, uh, if perhaps you're not going with such a complex setup with a, a mirrorless or DSLR camera you may just have a little point and shoot. Um, so having a little um, pouch on your belt or if you've got hip pockets that fit your camera anything like that that's going to ensure that that camera is ready to grab at a moment's notice that's going to really help improve your photography simply by allowing you more opportunities to take photos so that is tip number one track in the Waitakere Ranges, uh, right out at Whadapu, uh, at the mouth of the Manuko Harbour. And uh, this is probably my favourite track in the Waitakere Ranges, or it certainly used to be. Uh, so there's these, uh, this range of uh, huge um, cliffs um, that form. They're the remnants of these uh, basalt volcanoes that ran along the east and west coasts of uh, what's now the northern part of the North Island of New Zealand and um, so there's these incredible bluffs with just staggering views over the Manuko Harbour and uh, this track runs right along the edge of it. Now it used to be a pretty gnarly track uh, with chains to help you up and a few steep bits, incredibly slippery in winter 
um, and pretty notorious and I absolutely loved it. I've done the track many, many times. Uh, but the Waitakere Ranges were closed um, due to risk of kauri dieback, uh, which is a pathogen which kills kauri trees. And um, they've gradually been upgrading the tracks and reopening them. And the Amanawanui track uh, has been upgraded with steps and gravel um, to a much higher standard. So it's now quite an easy track to do, although there is a lot of steep climbs. And I haven't done it since it reopened, so the, the road out here is pretty wild and uh, it uh, has been closed for a long time due to slips, um, but it's reopened, so I've taken this opportunity to come out here and check out how the new upgraded track is. Um, so we've got a lot of climbing to do, as you can see, this is, this is the first kind of major hill. Um, there's actually a much bigger one behind it, which you'll see when we get to the top of this hill. So. Ah, we better get stuck in because um, this wind is certainly picking up, this bad weather is on its way in and I don't really want to be right up the top when it arrives. something that I'm guilty of not following today and that is to start early and or finish late. If, you've, uh, if you know anything about landscape photography you'll probably know that the um, generally it's held the best time to shoot is around sunrise and sunset um, and you'll see plenty of those amazing sunrise and sunset colours on places like Instagram. For traditional landscape photography where you take your time um, you can turn up uh, to a spot specifically to take a sunrise or a sunset photograph, wait around for the perfect light and then take your shot. When we're talking about uh, just taking snaps as you're out hiking, obviously the main purpose of your trip is to go hiking and you don't want to be waiting around for the best light. Uh, you need to move on and carry on with your journey. But what you can do to give yourself the opportunity for at least a few photographs within that uh, area of best light is uh, if you start your walks really really early uh, or you finish your walks really really late um, and ideally maybe even do both. Uh, obviously that's going to depend on the circumstance. Um, safety has to come first and uh, you know if you've got a full day of hiking and it's uh, an overnight or multi-day trip you may not uh, be able to finish really late or start really early uh, but certainly if you can get some of your trip at least uh, occurring in that kind of golden and blue hour either side of sunrise and sunset uh, that's going to give you opportunities for amazing light and uh, you may get better photographs. Um, I haven't done that today um, so I had a bit of a sleep in and uh, I certainly can't stay out here till sunset because uh, as I said the bad weather is coming in so uh, I need to get moving. Uh, tip I've got um, might be a little bit of a controversial one and that is uh, to use the rules. There's a number of uh, compositional rules that uh, those who have studied photography will be familiar with including the rule of thirds, 
concept of using diagonals, using intersecting lines, using leading lines, uh, use of negative space, balance. They're not really rules in the traditional sense. Um, they're sometimes uh, what you'd call a rule of thumb or a guide. Certain images have found to be particularly aesthetically pleasing and uh, from all of the most pleasing uh, compositions that have existed, it's uh, possible to draw certain generalizations about uh, compositional structure and compositional features that contribute to those images being the way they are and and that's where you get your um, your rules of composition so it, it can assist you with your images um, so it's not a rule but it's they're kind of like helping hands if you like and those are probably the biggest difference between a generic holiday snap and uh, a well-composed, well-thought-out image. The thing is, you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of time carefully composing an image in order to uh, utilise the advantages of those rules. Whenever you frame up something that you find interesting and appealing, you can very quickly apply those conventions to it just to give you a slightly better composition and what you'll find over time is as you train your eyes to those compositional guides you will start to think about the world around you not so much just about the way you look at it as a person but the way your camera sees it and the way that it will appear in a photograph by training yourself to look for those compositional cues uh, using those guidelines um, you will come away with far more interesting images and as you're hiking along your eye will naturally be looking for those interesting compositions as you go and that's going to really improve your hiking photos. <laughs>
you know, to the story that you're trying to tell and give the complete picture. And in years to come, you'll really enjoy looking back on those photographs that actually tell the story of the trip, rather than just a couple of photographs of beautiful scenery. I think that's enough for today. Um, my ankle is still a little bit tender from uh, the injury that I sustained on Te Araroa and um, I haven't been doing a lot of physical exercise since then so uh, I don't want to push it too far so I'm going to head back down the hill now and head home and uh, once I'm home we'll talk about my final tip to improve your hiking photographs. home I've finished my walk and it's time for my final tip for improving your hiking photos and that quite simply is to edit them. Uh, modern cameras produce pretty good JPEG images. Um, when you take a photo using JPEG settings your camera's processor will automatically do some basic editing to that photograph to give it a particular look. However if you shoot raw and then edit your photographs on your computer using software such as Lightroom, you have much more control over your images and you could be quite shocked at how much your photos will actually improve simply by using editing software. I know that programs like Lightroom can be quite intimidating when you first start to use them, but there's some really good tutorials on YouTube and actually they're quite simple to use and to get used to. Uh, a simple tip is that if you look at a program like Lightroom, the settings down the right hand side of the screen are listed in the order that generally you want to edit them. So you have your global settings at the top, your basic settings like exposure, white balance, contrast, and then as you move down the right hand side you get into your more specific editing and your masking. These tools can really make a huge difference to your photographs as some of these examples show. By shooting RAW you unlock the full potential of your camera and then by editing those RAW images you open up a whole new opportunity for creative expression. So my recommendation is to start shooting RAW and start editing your photographs in Lightroom or a similar software. You can start with some really basic edits to begin with or even import the presets from your camera and then modify them slightly. But as you get more confident and start to dive deeper into the more complex tools on offer, you're really going to discover some great creative potential to really elevate your photographs. Those are just five basic tips that I have for improving your hiking photographs. I hope that you'll keep these in mind next time you're out on a hiking trip and that they'll really enhance your photographs that you can keep forever as a memory of your trips. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.